Well, guys, <laughs> I'm on a fourth with Outfitters Outdoors. Uh, guys, I had one of our uh, subscribers ask to go on a little more detail on how to tie uh, a hook to your staging or drop line on a trot line. So we're going to do that. And we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, hooks. And uh, um, boys, you need to get one of those too. Uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, like this line, and I was also asked by another subscriber what uh, size of line we use. This here is uh, a size 12 by 375 feet. Uh, this is always the size that I always use. Uh, now, my main line, I, I always had it a little uh, larger. And next time I go buy some of those, I'll get the exact uh, um, size dimensions. But uh, you could use this for your uh, main line, but um, be it as small as it is, it'll stretch, and that could uh, uh, can turn out bad for you. So we're going to just run a few uh, staging here. Boys, I, I hope no matter where you are, the, the fish are biting because they're not. Not here in the Midwest. Now, guys, uh, if you haven't seen our other video on how to navigate the Mississippi, uh, you might want to go over and take a look at that. It's got some kind of unique insights on that. And... Uh, it might help you a little bit. Okay, now, there is that. Now, what we're going to do here in just a second, we're going to reset the camera. And, uh, show you how we tie these things on. Now, for the most part, uh, I'm not going to use hooks. as uh, I'm going to use swivels. And the basic fundamentals are exactly the same. Uh, I don't generally bring hooks into the house, but uh, we're all going to do a little thing here a little bit on, on the different types of uh, hooks. But uh, generally with my wife and our cat, if I got my what my cat uh, <laughs> caught up on a, a hook, my I'd never hear the end of it from my wife. And then if if uh, she got hooked, oh gee whiz guys, I'd be have to... Go find me a new place to live. So, there we go, guys. I think uh, we got enough here for our, our drop, our drop line. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk to you a little bit about hooks. Uh, well, hi, welcome back, guys. Hey, I, I did break a, a rule here. I did bring some hooks into the house. And I got a witness right over there in the chair reading her book that she's making sure that I keep track of all these hooks. Now, guys, this is the, the, the most simple way and the most effective way that I know is attaching a hook to your drop line or your staging line. And you simply uh, tie a knot. And you want to move it up to right there. And you want to make it uh, pretty close to the end, but you got a little nubbin out here. And uh, now what we're going to do is feed the line. Now, I've always thought, and I've never done it, I would think that that would probably be okay. But uh, that's not how my daddy taught me. And... Uh, this is how I always attach. Now, you see there, guys? It's just a simple knot. Now, let's uh, do another one. Well, let's do it on the other end. Uh, the, now, 
guys all know that this here is a, a circle hook and uh, they, they're starting to grow on me a little bit but the ones that I really like and and this is for uh, uh, trot lines I'm using cut bait or uh, uh, maybe a, a big piece of uh, uh, bluegill or something like that and this is the wide gap offset and guys there's no way the fish are going to get that in their mouth and they're going to get out get uncaught I mean it's and also, guys, I use this for my rod and reel uh, fishing. And I know the premise behind that, and I can appreciate that. And uh, we do use this setup from, from time to time when we're uh, fishing for some uh, larger catfish. But, boy, guys, I'm telling you that... Uh, now, I guess another thing I want to talk to you a little bit about is the size. And that is completely dependent upon what you're fishing for. Now, if you're just going to go fishing for your normal everyday catfish, something to take home to eat, then you can just downsize this. Uh, and I find it uh, easier to bait. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be running some other tests on those. Uh, but this is, uh, boy, if I was, I'm not going to tell you what hook to buy because uh, that's pretty much will be up to you. But if you're going to be testing some guys, uh, you might really want to look at this wide gap offset. And uh, boy, I tell you, we uh, hooked that big flathead up this year. And it got in there, got him so uh, hooked up in the meaty part of the, of the mouth, uh, we couldn't get it out. And we just put him back in the water the way he was. I thought it would be better to put the fish back in the water with a with a little remembrance of our encounter than to deprive him of oxygen any longer and maybe lose a, a trophy fish so and this here is uh, a J hook the staple of, of what I've always used my whole life and one of the things I want you to, to bear in mind is the size of the eyelet and guys if you're going to be using uh, this uh, 75 pound strength line uh, you want to make sure that you've got a hook that's got an eyelet big enough and easy enough to get your line through there. And now guys, uh, simply what I'm going to do is tie a knot at the end of the string. And now, just go back and do it over again. Pull the knot through, just like that, and you pull it down. Now guys, uh, I've been doing this for <laughs> way over 50 years, and I don't remember ever losing a hook to, uh, to becoming untied. Now, I have cut, lost some fish that uh, the string wasn't uh, in good enough shape, or and it, it just uh, it ringed off, and but uh, and that's a a fair size for uh, a trot line, and it's also going to be completely dependent on what you're fishing for and the bait you're using. Now, when we commercially fished, we use uh, soft shell crawdad. And that was, it was just the perfect size. And then when you go to uh, bait this with worms, uh, you don't, it only takes about a half of a night crawler to fill up that, that uh, bait. And uh, there you go, guys. Now, now there's another thing, too, uh, I want to touch base with you a little bit. And that is, uh, well, guys, you, hey, this is uh, a trot line that, uh, it, I just pressed in the service. Uh, it was one that we used last fall, and uh, it is a. Um, I'm not sure what you would call this. It looks like a uh, just a regular J hook, circle hook, uh, but it resembles more a wide gap. And uh, we caught some pretty nice fish on on this line. It just was one of those nasty days we we just couldn't take the, all of our film equipment. And this is the same thing here, guys. 
uh, you don't have to, if you use uh, snap swivels, you don't have to uh, have a number of lines all rigged up with different size hooks. What you gotta do is go ahead and change that out. And uh, I have other ones that uh, I won't be bringing in, in today, but uh, we've got some uh, with lots of different types of swivels now. Uh, and also different types. Now I would suggest maybe uh, you go and take a look at that uh, trot line update that we did early this spring and it, it, that goes in a little more in depth on the, the use of different types of swivels and uh, hooks and stuff like that. Uh, but boy guys, I'm really <laughs> becoming a fan of this uh, wide gap circle hook. I wish I was selling them, but... Uh, well, I guess I could. Uh, guys, uh, one of the things you could do, and it wouldn't hurt my feelings, that you go over to our website, outfittersoutdoor.com, uh, and uh, there'll be a link down there to click. And guys, once you're in uh, that our website, heaven's sakes, you can buy a brand new car. Uh, there's everything under the sun on that website except for guns and ammunition. And... Uh, well, guys, I think I'm going to uh, kind of wrap that, this up. Uh, let me tie on one more and go into some uh, decent depth. And if I can get my lovely assistant to come over and make sure. Now, one of the things, guys, and I just kind of encountered that, is uh, there's a, a little tag here that's making this thing kind of hard to get through there. But you, you've seen that uh, that snaps up, it went right in. But let's go ahead and get that in there. You guys, all you do, can you see? Just go ahead and t tie a knot. Simplest thing in the, in the world. And pull it tight but you always want to leave a little nub right there and test it come over here wrap it around you just simple take it around a knot pull it down and there you go guys um, now I do um, advocate that when you make these is to use a, a swivel, uh, a snap swivel, a barrel swivel with a, a snap on it. And that way you can able to change out your, your hook at a moment notice. The one on Friday night you might put it out and use it for flathead, change out, uh, pick up your, uh, your fish. Then right there in the boat, you can go ahead, unsnap them, go to a, a J hook, something a little smaller, and then even go with a, a, another hook, bigger or smaller. But guys, I tell you what, these hooks right here, uh, I'm really impressed with these. Like I said, uh, we, we did catch some nice catfish on those, and that's about the size of the hook we used uh, for a very long time uh, fishing on the Mississippi commercially. Uh, but they were also, uh, weren't offset, and they were always silver like this, and my dad bought them by the, uh, by the thousands. Uh, when you're fishing constantly uh, anywhere from 500 to 1,000 or more hooks every day, uh, you're gonna uh, mess up some lines, and uh, you're going to need to replace some, some hooks, so uh, we bought them uh, by large numbers. Well, there you go, guys. I, I don't know if there's any more uh, way I could uh, explain the how to tie the uh, hook onto uh, a, uh, your line. And, uh, guys, I think we're going to wrap this up. And... Uh, I hope we're no matter where you are, the fish are biting.